Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! My sauce is ruined. My whole dinner is ruined. I followed this recipe step by step. The guy said if I did it this way, then I did this, then I did this, then I did that. It would come out just like the picture in the book. I can't believe it. My dinner is ruined. I was supposed to make this really nice gravy, and it was supposed to be really nice and thick so that it would stick to everything, and it's, it's, it's just thin. It just looks like chicken soup, and I did everything they said. Why did I depend on the recipe again? Well, welcome back to Cooking Course. If you turned in for fine, fancy cooking, um, you turned in the wrong place. This is Cooking Course. And we have a problem here that uh, it winds up in a lot of people's kitchens, that you follow these recipes and it doesn't turn out like the nice picture was. And very often, I'm not even sure that they followed the recipe to make that picture anyway. But what I have here is some kind of dish that I've been making. It doesn't really matter what it is, but it, it's not thick. I didn't thicken my gravy. And this week, we've been talking about thickening agents, starches in particular roux, fat and starch that makes roux, roux thickens liquids. At 150 degrees, starches gelatinize, they swell liquids and they absorb, they absorb liquids and swell and this, th this is what thickens our sauces. So that we talked about in the past that we always have to have a hot liquid and a cold roux or a hot roux and a cold liquid. These two must be opposite. So my problem that I've got on the stove here is that I've got a very thin liquid. I've got a very thin sauce here that really is not going to thick to any, stick to anything. How do I go ahead and thicken this without taking out another pan, melting some butter in the pan, adding some flour to it, cooking out the proteins and so on? It's an emergency! My, my guests are coming any minute now. What do I do in an emergency? Well, I've already told you that fat and starch is roux, namely butter and flour. So what do I got in here? I got a pat of butter. What do I got here? A scoop of flour. Let's add the two of them together and what I'll do is knead this softened pat of, of butter and squeeze as much flour as I possibly can into that pat of butter. What am I doing? Fat and starch roux, right? This is an uncooked roux. So as I continue to squeeze as much flour into this butter ball as possible, I'm making an uncooked roux. Now granted, an uncooked roux is going to taste a little bit more pasty than, than a cooked roux because we cook the proteins out, but once I get this little ball of fat and starch, fat and flour, butter and flour together, this is my uncooked roux. Oh, I might save the day. So we go back to my boiling liquid here and now that I have my roux and my trusty whisk I can start crumbling in some of this burmani it's called in French burmani our uncooked roux and thicken my dish and finish this up so what I'll do actually start crumbling this in here come on I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how it goes all right, I brought you all the way over to the stove so we can look down into this pan. Hi, everybody. Um, into this pan here, and look how thin this is. We're going to pretend this is some kind of dish. This is Pretend there's chicken in here and, and vegetables and all kinds of stuff, um, but this is just an example. Look how thin this gravy is. It doesn't stick to the back of the spoon at all, but when I introduce my burmani and I start to crumble some of that into the, into the boiling liquid, this is my hot liquid and cold roux. It's an uncooked roux, like I said. It may have a little starchy taste to it, but we're in an emergency situation here. The guests are coming. We need to get this completed as quickly as possible. So with my burmani in there, and I continue to whisk and break that up, what this does is enable the starches to gelatinize. The fat in there it, um, put, lines up the starch molecules so that I don't get lumps, and the starches gelatinize and thicken this liquid. So I could make a roux in a separate pan and add this to a liquid. Of course, I would have to uh, chill it down first, um, but now I've got my nice thickened liquid and if I take my spoon and run it through here, look how much better this sticks to the spoon and I've got my nappe. This is a much thicker sauce now with a nice chicken and butter flavor. Running my hand through there gives me the nappe. So that's our study of burmani, how we can thicken items in an emergency. So that's our thickened uh, dish, uh, whatever it might have been in here. My object is not to teach you recipes like I've said a hundred times, but to teach you some kind of procedure. So what can you make up from this? Well, bring a little bit of chicken broth to a boil on the stove and add some cubed chicken and some carrots and some celery and some onions and some broccoli and anything that you would like and use this method of burmani. 
push as much flour into a softened pat of butter as possible and then crumble it in there when it comes to a simmer and stir it. It'll thicken your gravy. You know what this is like? This is like chicken and dumplings. In the south, people take chicken broth simmering, they put the chicken in there and they drop those dumplings in. Well, those dumplings are so starch laden that the whole thing turns to a nice gravy, a nice a thick gravy that sticks to everything. Uh, if you wanted to do this, again, what if you wanted to make a Mexican dish? Well, we could bring um, some kind of liquid to a simmer if we wanted to, um, chicken broth like that, and then maybe add some jalapenos or some onions, some cumin and coriander, some pieces of beef or shrimp or chicken or steak, whatever it may be, and then use this little Burmani trick that I just showed you. It is the combination of fat and starch roux that thickens our sauces. Man, it's one of the greatest things you can do because a good sauce makes up for a bad piece of meat.